Welcome to this episode of The Secret 2 Podcast, where we speak to industry leaders to give us their hidden success formulas across film, TV, music and FMCG industries, all brought to you by Paradise, the agency for entertaining brands. I'm your host, Emma Bartholomew. I'm really excited about today's episode because it's just going to be a celebration of the joy of cinema and the secret to how one of the true giants of the business brings in the punters and keeps them coming by serving up the unrivaled delight of watching films on the big screen. So who better to speak to than a giant of the cinema chain world? The second largest cinema chain in the world, no less, with sites across 10 different countries, Cineworld Cinemas, who have their HQ here in London. And I'm joined today by Carla Boyd. Hi, Carla, and welcome to The Lens. Hi, nice to see you. (laughs) It's great to have you here. But my only question to start us off is why the hell haven't we got any popcorn? Oh, I know. I know. I I should have brought some. Yeah, I'm I'm feeling a little bit disappointed, (laughs) although we might have been spitting it out on the mic. That wouldn't have been a great look. Um, It'd be a nice ASMR treat for, you know, listeners. It would be. Yeah, I can really imagine that now I've said it is in my head. Um, So tell us about your role at Cineworld and maybe your journey. Have you always been a cinephile? Yeah, so I started my journey at Cine World back eight years ago, mm-hmm. a long time ago, almost eight years ago in Jan. Um, and I started off as social media community manager and I basically was in charge of the managing of the social media channels uh, from like a marketing perspective. So writing all the content for all the different platforms and sort of supporting on the, the blog content and making sure that we had what we needed to to post. Um and then things evolved, people left, and I kind of moved my way up and kept being like, well, oh, well, if no one's doing this, maybe I could have a go. Um, and then took on lots and lots of things. And uh, so by uh, 2021, I got promoted to senior social media and content marketing manager. Uh, after I kind of said, we need to change my title because it makes no sense that I'm sitting in all these meetings and people are like, why is a social media manager in here? And uh, so I've kind of went with content marketing because it felt like it encompasses more of what I do. Because uh, now I'm in charge of all of our email content that goes out all of our copy for the for the emails um all of our influencer marketing so anything that goes on social with influencers our blog content our digital marketing strategy across all of our pay channels for for, for digital um and our social media content uh, across all of our different channels plus we also like edit new channels because we started doing things on youtube and tiktok and things um and so i was kind of doing all of that by myself back in 2021 and then I went on maternity leave and I came back and now I have a team of four people. (laughs) And so it sounds, I mean, I have to say credit to you because going away on mat leave and coming back and the the team realising that you are effectively doing the job of a million people, congrats on (laughs) on being recognised for that because it's difficult to be recognised in that way. Yeah. Um, But it sounds like your everyday role is pretty varied. Are there any... Are there any highlights? I I'm I seem to remember reading something about interviewing a Muppet. Is that, is that a highlight or a low light? Uh, not technically Muppet. It was a puppet. Okay. Think, yes. Okay. Uh, there is a distinction. Yes, there so is I a don't distinction. Wanna, yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Not one of the official Muppets. Okay. Uh, it a was puppet. a puppet. Okay. Uh, one of the weirdest interviews I've done, and I've done quite a few, because <laughs> uh, it was the entire interview. I had to stare at the puppet and pretend I wasn't seeing the person okay. talking underneath, yes, I can, holding the, yeah, the puppet. I can see. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, that was that was that was a weird one having a conversation, and also he was addressing me and saying, "Oh, Carla," da, 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 and I'm like. It's, it's really strange to be talking to a puppet. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that was probably one of the strangest interviews that I've done. Okay, so maybe not not a highlight. But <laughs> is there a sort of a day in the life of, or is it just so varied that every day is completely different? It's it's really difficult because it's super varied. Mm-hmm. It's it's dependent on the sl- slate. So mm-hmm. depending on like which films are coming out, it's completely different priorities. You know, you've got black. Buster season where you've got like a million huge titles coming out and then you've got like smaller seasons where you think like oh well if there isn't so much film content now you probably don't have as much to do but actually that's when then we have to fill the time with like other campaigns that still drive people into the cinema and come up with other ways of bringing them in so for October for example it was a fairly quiet month but we had like horror seasons so we got lots of horror movies back on the big screen and got people to come into the cinema sort of through through that realm um, and so there's 
there's always different things going on with the films that make everything else then really different. And then so sometimes the priority is an influencer campaign and having to kind of sort of work with influencers. Sometimes we put events on to try and support films in different formats. So, um, yeah, we, we I've run like multiple different events and been kind of part of other people running events and sort of, sort of spent the entire day in the cinema and helping set that up and then running it on the day and then kind of exhaustedly sitting in the corner going, OK, we did it. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so it's really difficult. I couldn't. Even if I look at like the last two weeks, every single day I was doing completely different things. So it's very, very tough to give a late day in the life. <laughs> yeah, but that's great. I mean, yeah. I love a job that is completely varied. And that's I think that kind of helps to drive the passion because yeah. it never gets tedious or boring or predictable, which is yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's one of the reasons why I've been here for so long because it's every day is different, every week is different, every month, every year is different. And things are continuously progressing. And as the world evolves, you know, cinema evolves, cinema audiences evolve, and you have to kind of keep up with that and try and reach them in all the different places that they've gone. You know, like that's how we started up our TikTok channel because we were like, well, there's this whole group of people that we're not talking to because we're not there. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like spotting these opportunities and kind of jumping on them. Yeah, absolutely. So I definitely want to delve a bit more deeply into all the kind of cornerstones of your marketing strategy and how you go about um, keeping your audience uh, engaged and crucially entertained and coming back for more. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to maybe start with the issue around the home streaming possibilities. Okay, mm. so we can, as I said in my introduction, we can literally watch whatever we want, whenever we want, in the comfort of our own homes. Mm. When it comes to marketing and talking to your audience about Cineworld, um, are you just saying, okay, we are a com this is a completely different experience, so don't even think about what's going on in people's homes. This is the place that we're focusing on. Is that how you kind of approach it? It's, it's a little bit of both. I mean, on the one hand, we definitely have the realm of kind of we 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 have to acknowledge that home exists. We have to acknowledge that people can see things at home. Um, but I do think that we do approach it in like it, it's a completely different experience. Like if you if you want to just watch a film at home in the evening while you're eating your dinner, that's a very different thing to like taking the time out to go into the cinema and be fully immersed in in a cinema experience. Uh, like one of the questions actually, like you kind of mentioned all the things in, in your intro, but like one of the questions that uh, we sort of, we try to ask whenever we interview anyone, whether it's a director, producer, talent from the film, you know, the stars of the film, we always ask the question, like, what's your favourite part about going to the cinema? And it's always those answers. It's the the shared community sitting in a room full of people and everyone laughs at the same time and everyone cries at the same time. It's that the, the goosebumps you get when the lights turn off and you're, like, fully immersed in it. It's that having your phone be literally, like, in your bag and you don't touch it for two hours, which is, like, for a lot of people, that's the only time in their lives where they literally don't touch their phone. Like, any other time, people just take their phones to the bathroom, let's be honest. So, yeah. You know, it's, it's, you know, you have your phone in your hand from the moment you wake up to the second you go to bed. So that's the, it's like, it's a lot of people are seeing it as like a mental health escape, you know, like mm. just having that two and a half hours of like just switching off from the world and being fully immersed in the story, which is just so much harder when you do it at home. You know, if, if you sit on the sofa, you're just so easily distracted by like, oh, I could just go and make a cup of tea real quick. Or, you know, you pause the movie, you go to the bathroom or someone rings the doorbell, you know, there's, there's yeah. all these distractions. Um, and it is, I think, also just a bit of that, that nostalgia and that treat like you know walking into the cinema and you smell the popcorn and you feel that like oh I remember this feeling you know it's, yeah. it's just it's it's quite special so I think when we do the marketing for it we kind of try to divvy it up into like you've got the people who just love cinema and they're already sold in and they go all the time we've got like our sort of core customers who are like our unlimited members who have the membership because they go two three four five six times a month and you know they kind of they they keep coming back and we don't really like we need to bring the film slate and out there and like make sure that they know what films are out there for them to go and see but that's about like the main job that we have with them but then it's everyone else because obviously cinema is really for everyone like there's very few people who you'll meet who say I don't like movies and most of the time you're like you don't like what do you mean you don't like movies <laughs> uh, but most people you know no matter what age from from little kids who who love going to see like the the kids films and you know like the Paw Patrol and Trolls and all this kind of stuff to like the like the much older generation who want to go back and like you know watch films that uh, are sort of aimed at them about like historical things that maybe they even lived through and that kind of stuff to obviously everyone in the middle who wants to see the the newest like action blockbuster or like a really sad drama because they just want to have a big cry and you know be in that moment uh so it's you know kind of how do you reach these people where do you reach these people and how do you remind them about that you know what makes cinema special and um 
I mean, we've got our special formats and we do a lot of focus on that and around, you know, you can see a film in 40X, which has got moving seats and wind mm-hmm. and water and scents and all this sort of stuff. Like, you can't do that at home. That's very yeah. different, you know. You've yeah. got the giant IMAX screen with the amazing audio that, like, just makes you feel like you're literally there and, like, the seats vibrate with, when, you know, the rumbling is happening and everything. Again, something that's just very different to, like, no matter how good your home screen is, that's it's not going to be the same as an IMAX. Uh, we've got the Screen X with the three screens that kind of involve you so you literally see like profile vision scenes and everything that's going on so we do lean into that quite a lot it's like you know the experiences that are very distinct to like cine world and like the big screen um but then we also try to do all the other stuff of just reminding people like why cinema is lovely and why going to the cinema is lovely and you know why cine world is the place that they should go and and sort of see the films yeah Wow. I mean, the way you're talking, I just desperately want to go to the cinema <laughs> right now. So maybe we can just go straight after this. That sure. would be a treat. <laughs> you mentioned the word treat. And that is what I think of when I think of a trip to the cinema, because it is a trip and you're entering into a magical world. And the magical world, as you mentioned earlier, is somewhere where we don't look at our phones. But... There is a there is a connecting point here because we do look at our phones constantly. And so the world of influencer marketing is mm. really crucial. Yeah. And I know that you've done some really trailblazing stuff around influencer marketing that's actually won you some awards, right? Yes. So tell us about that. Yeah, we've we've done loads of stuff. I think uh, influence is really funny because when I first started, the social media and PR manager that I reported into at the time, he actually left to start an influence agency and he's doing really well for himself. Um, but he kind of saw that potential really early on when a lot of people were still like, I don't know, why would we pay someone to talk about us? You know, like people are talking about us anyway kind of thing. Um, and now it's become such a core thing of what we do. Like our latest un- unlimited campaign, uh, every single person in that, in that uh, piece of like the advert um, in that piece of content is a, a content creator every one of those people is a TikToker and so we literally like took an ad and you know pitched it around these different people and the different talents that they had and so it's now really become like such a fundamental part of of what we do and so like in uh, 2019 was the first year where we sort of did something quite different we worked with an ASMR influencer and we got him to create like ASMR content in a cinema, mm-hmm. so it would it, you'd have like the sort of the the sliding of the straw into the popcorn uh, into the uh, the Pepsi cup, and you'd have like the popcorn sort of rumoring around and like sort of rustling, and uh, it's really weird because I wasn't like into ASMR, but I watched that video and I did get the goosebumps. And I yes, kind of, I, I have it. seen that video. Yeah. Oh wow! It's it's the things that I was mentioning in the introduction, but in this kind of three dimensional way that mm. really takes you into the world of the cinema experience it's really effective yeah so so we worked with him and we kind of created that one long piece of content uh, and then we had that cut into like shorter pieces and we used it as like a countdown to Christmas like each day is like we kind of lend into the 2019 you know pre-pandemic there was, we had different problems so it was about like Christmas is very busy and we're also stressed about having to get Christmas presents so therefore we're here to like relax you and de-stress you by providing you with this ASMR content uh, and yeah so we kind of worked with him on that and uh, yeah won some awards in, in 2020 uh, or well actually 2021 I think I can't remember I was I think pandemic uh, all those years blur together oh uh, they do it's yeah. just a block of time we'd rather forget yeah, yeah exactly um, but yeah so we, we we won an award for that and it was yeah it was really interesting to like sort of get recognised for that and sort of see other people sort of feeling that they can relate to that yeah absolutely and I yeah I mean I think when a when a piece of content that you've created stands alone as a brilliant piece of work that's really satisfying as a creative so yeah, yeah for congrats sure. on that it's amazing <laughs> um now influencers in terms of bringing them regularly into cine world mm. you have these creator days so tell us a little bit about how that works yeah so um we've been putting on events anyway we've also we work with studios where like they would put on events and we kind of work with them like um we've we've had a few so 
last year we had our very first creator day and we basically worked with Paramount and uh, we allow got them to allow us to use the 40x screen in uh, Leicester Square and we invited people down so they got to sort of as part of the main premiere like walk down the carpet at the same time as Tom Cruise and then instead of going into the IMAX screen they went down to the 40x screen and then kind of like filmed the experience sort of of the trailers obviously not the movie uh, but sort of filmed the experience of what 40X is all about and we had like a, an intro with them in the morning where we kind of showed them the different effects and, and kind of gave them a bit of a of a taste of it um, because we wanted them to create content about 40X and raise awareness of yeah. 40X uh, on TikTok and it's really worked like my brother lives in Germany and he sent me this video and he's like this is so cool do you guys do this and I'm like <laughs> yeah I was responsible for getting yeah, this video filmed um, so yeah so it's, it's really like raised awareness of like our core demographic which is that sort of like 16 to 26, 28 year olds of, of people who, who love that kind of format of like being really immersed and having that bit of a roller coaster ride as they watch a movie. Um, so we had our first one of that last year and it was really successful and it did really well and we got lots of content out of it. And so we did a second one this year and we were going to try and pitch it around one movie and then lots of things and it just kind of didn't quite work out. So in the end, we uh, so we wanted to do it. Um, in 40X and ScreenX to make it sort of big and better than last year and elevate it a bit more and get like also more seats because with 40X you're a bit restricted because there's only 150 seats in that screen so then you can only invite so many people. So we opened it up and had it in ScreenX as well so then we had to find like two films that we could show in these formats and in the end uh, just because of like logistics and things I work with two studios on two different films on the same night as two separate but same event yeah. type things uh, so some people were invited to go and try 40X before then going to see the film in Screen X and other people were invited to try and Screen X before they then go into 40X and nice. it is the toughest thing I've done <laughs> the logistics uh, I've got a headache just thinking about that imagining yeah. it yeah yeah you had you had the kind of having to get people to go to the right place initially and then leave and go to the other place at the correct time and then we had to like navigate the intros and then they were kind of happening at the same time the different screens so I had like lots of my colleagues like bless the marketing team at in a world they all helped out so we had like half of them upstairs in the screen eggs helping out because also that's the other thing the O2 is massive so we had literally opposite ends of the building like going from one screen to the other takes about four minutes if you're running so it was just impossible to manage by myself so I ended up like having lots and lots of help and had yeah sort of like one screen was managing the 40X and kind of getting people in there and then also you have restrictions because you can't bring like open containers in because the seats move and you would spill it everywhere oh, so yeah. Yeah. I had to make sure that was happening and like brief security and do all those things. Uh, but it was really successful. We had over 250 influencers show up and lots and lots of content created that was posted after of people kind of, yeah, like going away and sharing the experience of like what Screen X is all about and what 40X is all about. And yeah, so it was worth the hassle in the end. Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah, as I said, exhausting just imagining yeah. that. Um, and brilliant that you obviously had the success of the influencers being engaged and attending in the first place and then creating the content as a result and that presumably then extending your reach massively and getting to a much bit bigger audience. Do you, is it easy to see any kind of conversion between all that incredible content, the audience that's watching it and the literally the punters who are coming in to watch the films is it can you kind of analyze that yeah it's, to a point yeah i mean mm -hmm. obviously sometimes it's it's also just other things that are happening like you know if the film has a big marketing campaign and it raises awareness and then you know other screens are sold out so then they go into that one you know that also happens but for sure we've seen an increase in in ticket sales in for those specific titles where we've done like extra awareness of the fact that you can see them for the x and also for sure we've we've seen a massive increase in like awareness and overall people like going and wanting to go to try these formats after finding out about them mm -hmm. um, one of the biggest things actually where we noticed like a huge difference was um, VIP so we've got Cinema World VIP which is only at five cinemas uh, one of them is CO2 uh, one of them is Sheffield York I don't know I can't remember Glasgow and Cheltenham I think um, very well remembered yeah, on the yeah. spot I believe I, mean, I believe that's the fifth one uh, but yeah so we've got those five five locations and um, we were always struggling with like raising awareness of it because it's so different and it's only in five cinemas so you can't do like big national pushes about it because it would just confuse people because it's only so localised yeah. but then also when you do localised campaigns then it's it's harder to reach the, like, the mm -hmm. audiences and like reach everyone in that in that area um, so we always kind of struggled to like let people know about it so what it is is that it's 
uh, you arrive 45 minutes before the film. There's like a full sort of food service beforehand. So you got like pizza, pasta, salad, desserts, and like a Sunday machine. Uh, and then there's like unlimited popcorn and uh, hot dogs and nachos that you can grab to take in and unlimited uh, soft drinks. And there's a bar where you can buy like extra alcohol. And then you go into the screen and all the screens have like little side tables and like recliner seats with like foot dress and everything. Wow. And it's it's really lush and like yeah. people really like it. But a lot of people don't didn't really realise what it was. And I yeah. remember I was sort of part of like trying to help sort of raise awareness of it and everything back in 2019 and I was like in a screening and someone came in and was like oh I didn't realise there was going to be food and she paid for the ticket already and she didn't even oh, realise okay. what she was getting with it yeah. so it was a big like we needed to raise awareness and sort of understanding of it um, and then by complete sheer luck with nothing to do with us it went viral on TikTok and like a few people like random people not even like content creators but just like random people went in and were like I did this thing look it's really cool and those videos went viral had millions of views and all of a sudden like shows were sold out like Amazing. consistently and tickets were sold like so much better and now it's not like it's no longer something that we're like worried about because it's just it's 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 working yeah and it takes care of itself the message gets out and it takes care of itself yeah and I'm really excited about the concept of the 4DX and the ScreenX experience you were talking about the fact that um, the VIP experiences are only available in five cinemas. So how about the 4DX and the ScreenX? Is that quite limited as well? Because I imagine they need to be in very special places. Yeah, so they are in sort of our bigger cinemas because obviously if you only have like five screens, like giving one up to 4DX is, is quite a big ask. But mm. uh, like I think Lesser Square, uh, not Lesser Square, sorry, um, the O2 I think has got about oh, I don't want to lie, like 16 to 20 screens or something. So then it's a lot easier to make one of them a 4DX, one yeah. of them a ScreenX. So that one's got both. Um, so I think on the spread, I'm not 100% sure, but I, it's over 30 on 4DX, I believe, and over 20 on ScreenX. But they are quite spread out. So we do try to make them sort of reachable for people so that they can travel to go there and we do find, tend to find that people will because it's such a bigger experience you know it's kind of yeah. going, like going to a theme park or something people are willing to travel that little bit further to go to a 4DX screen rather than just pop down to their local Sure and I guess that the marketing um, and reaching audiences on on those two experiences isn't so much kind of geographically connected because as you say people will travel yeah. and it's more about the concept the experience and how that is completely different from anything that you can get anywhere Yeah correct yeah, yeah. That's, that's definitely what we kind of lean into. It's like this This is a, an experience. This is a can't replicate this at home experience. And if you really want to feel part of the movie, and it, it's it's also like a variety of movies. Like obviously you kind of, you hear that and you think like, oh, action film, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like superhero movie kind of thing. But we had uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Like, you know, you've got like music of films where you, the, the, the seats are swaying. There was a, a Coldplay concert in 4DX, I think Ooh. this year, earlier this year. Uh, so, you know, you've got like the seats swaying and kind of like you're feeling part of like the concert yeah. we've got horror films in 40x oh, which is terrifying we've I'm got like little scared. we've got little bits of like <laughs> winds that come out of the seats and then like oh little God. we call them ankle ticklers that like come at the bottom okay. so like those in the right moments like you will literally <laughs> jump in your seat uh, so yeah there, there's like a whole variety like my favourite are the kids films because it's just so cute I watched Lego Batman in 40x and it was just such an adorable experience like there's this, this bit where he like like spoiler alert but he he sees someone and he he sort of falls in love with them and like there was flowers on the screen and there's like the scent of flowers that comes oh, out and nice. then like bubbles that float around while he's like falling in love and like the, you know having the starry eyes while he's looking at her and it's just so cute like it's, it's it's a really really good one for kids films oh that sounds amazing I definitely want to go and see that and not the horror film thing I'm, <laughs> I'm already scared about that um, okay let's just indulge ourselves for a second which I think I feel like you've been indulging me this whole time just wetting my appetite and getting me desperate to go to the cinema but what's your personal favorite part or oh, no I'm not going to restrict you <laughs> what are your favorite elements to the cinema experience as just a cinema goer as a film lover what do you what's your favorite thing uh I love popcorn I, it's also one of those ones where like you can't ever make it at home in the same way oh no it doesn't taste the same no you can't I've tried so much especially during lockdown I've tried so much microwave popcorn it's just not the same thing <laughs> salty sweet caramel salty nice yeah, yeah I'm, I'm salted Good. I will I will yeah. fight my corner on that yeah, one yeah me too um, although there's some really nice like the Jones test I don't know if you've ever had the, the gourmet popcorn mm. it's like mm. covered in chocolate or covered in caramel and stuff like that they're really nice as well so okay. I do occasionally treat myself to those ones um, also chocolate chocolate 
chocolate bits mixed mm-hmm. in with salted popcorn. Oh yeah, nice. Very good. Very yeah, good. Very Moorish. Yeah, 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 very Moorish. <laughs> um, but yeah, so definitely snacks. You can't go wrong with the snacks. Uh, but then honestly, my favorite thing is just the escapism. Like mm. I'm, I'm a fairly new mom, so when he started, like he stopped breastfeeding, and I was able to like go out for a few hours <laughs> by myself, <laughs> just like sitting in a dark room and just getting to have some me time. It's just so rewarding. It's lovely. Yeah. Um, I yeah, I I was thinking the first time I went away like to watch a movie was like beginning of this year and I watched The Whale which was also it's a, it's, it's a great movie but it's a really sad movie and I just sat in this room and I just had a big cry and I'm like I feel like I really needed this yes, therapy yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so definitely it's just like that that mental health break of just like having two and a half hours to myself in a dark room where no one's bugging me and like it's accepted that I don't look at my phone and no one's expecting me to respond if I just come out and you just text someone you say sorry I was in the cinema no one goes oh I can't believe you didn't check your phone <laughs> so yeah. yeah that's that's definitely that yeah one of my favorite elements yeah like you said before treat it's a treat the whole thing is a treat i also really love something that you don't get at home the trailers mm. gets me so excited about what i'm going to come back to the cinema and watch next time or across the year yeah yeah for sure and also one of my other favorite things is like that sitting in a room full of people who are really excited about something yes and then like watching it together like some of my favorite moments throughout my career it's in a world it's been like watching you know like the avengers movies and like watching that end game game with like a room full of Marvel fans on like a premiere yeah. and everyone just going like <gasps> Yes. and like cheering yeah, and things like that it's yeah, just like yeah, oh yeah. you get like the goosebumps and it's just it's such a lovely moment and it's just yeah. again it's not something you can do even if you watch it with like a group of friends at home you still wouldn't get the same no feeling. it's that collective response and the community emotion of it yeah it's really beautiful so looking ahead um are there any kind of exciting developments on the horizon that well, you might not be able to tell me, obviously, <laughs> and or if you did, you might have to kill me. But um, yeah, are there any things on the horizon that you're looking forward to in terms of maybe tech stuff that's coming in? Or it could even just be releases that are coming up in the year ahead that you're excited about seeing the audience response to? Um, yeah, good question. I mean, lots of films, lots of films that I'm excited to see. Um, there, I mean, there's Wonka coming out over Christmas. I think it'll be really interesting to see people's response to that. It's a yeah. musical, so it's, nice. you know, it's, it's, it's very Christmassy and, you know, like that, that style, everything I've seen of it, it just looks like so cute and like very also quite quintessentially British like mm-hmm. I feel like you know it's, it's from the makers of Paddington so it just it feels like it's a it's that kind of like family movie sort of Christmas treat yeah. um going back to treat yeah <laughs> yes, uh, the key word so yeah for, for the rest of this year that's certainly one that I'm kind of looking forward to um beginning of next year the color purple is coming out mm. which like it's a it's the music like a movie adaptation of the musical adaptation okay of the, of the book and the movie yeah wow um I, I'm really curious about that because I haven't seen the musical so I don't mm. really know what to expect because obviously I've seen the original movie and yeah Oh, so like yeah. kind of having like a lighter twist on that like I'm quite I'm curious mm-hmm. to see Intriguing. how that yeah how that will kind of come out um and then yeah I mean I'm not actually that I don't know that much yet about next year's slate and a lot of things have kind of shuffled around just because of sort of the the strikes that have been mm-hmm. going on and everything um so I think it'll, it'll still be like another few weeks before that kind of looks a bit more like a finalized list of, of what's coming up but there's there's lots of there's lots of stuff coming up next year that I'm really excited about and like a lot of also like the smaller the smaller dramas and the smaller comedies like there's a studio canal film uh called Wicked Little Letters starring Olivia Cole and Jesse Buckley that just looks hilarious uh and it's it's a it's essentially like a story of um it's like based on a true story back in I think nineteen twenties where um a woman started receiving these like wicked little letters full of swearing and kind of accuses someone of it and it's, it's this tiny little English village and like all these people kind of like go on to this woman who they think wrote those letters and stuff like that and it's just it's just it's really funny and really really British again and it just it comes across like something that I'm I'm curious to see like people's reactions to it but like the press the reviews have been really good amazing well it sounds like there's loads of things to look forward to where can we find your brilliant creative content on social platforms so that people can find cine world see what's going on and see how innovative your creative content is well thank you so much <laughs> uh it's cine world mm-hmm. on on all the different channels so if you Easy. search for cine world then you'll you'll find us on facebook 
X slash Twitter, uh, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Uh, those are kind of our key channels. And then we also have a blog. So we do, we do write content on there and sort of put, put sort of transcripts and, and information on any sort of interviews that we do and things like that as well. Great. Well, you sound like the busiest person I think I've ever spoken to. So thank you so much for giving up your time to come and speak no to us today. All. Thank you, Carla. Um, we will be back very soon with another episode of The Lens and more insider intakes on the creative world. Thanks so much for listening and for watching.